Hey everybody, and thanks for coming back. We got chapter 25 for holes. So here we go. Chapter 25. There was a doctor in the town of Green Lake 110 years ago. His name was Dr. Hawthorne. And whenever people got sick, they would go see Doc Hawthorne. But they would also see Sam, the onion man. Onions, sweet, fresh onions, Sam would call as he and his donkey, Mary Lou, walked up and down the dirt roads of Green Lake. Mary Lou pulled a cart full of onions. Sam's onion field was somewhere on the other side of the lake. Once or twice a week, he would row across the lake and pick a new batch to fill the cart. Sam had big, strong arms, but it would still take all day for him to row across the lake and another day for him to return. Most of the time, he would leave Mary Lou in the shed, which the walkers let him use at no charge. But sometimes, he would take Mary Lou on his boat with him. Sam claimed that Mary Lou was almost 50 years old, which was, and still is, extraordinarily old for a donkey. She eats nothing but raw onions, Sam would say, holding up a white onion between his dark fingers. It's nature's magic vegetable. If a person ate nothing but raw onions, he could live to be 200 years old. Sam was not much older than 20, so nobody was quite sure that Mary Lou was really as old as he said she was. How would he know? Still, nobody ever argued with Sam. And whenever they were sick, they would not only go, go to Doc Hawthorne, but also to Sam. <clears throat> Sam always gave the same advice. Eat plenty of onions. He said that the onions were good for the digestion, the liver, the stomach, the lungs, the heart, and the brain. If you don't believe me, just look at old Mary Lou here. She's never been sick a day in her life. He also had many different ointments, lotions, syrups, and pastes all made out of onion juice and different parts of the onion plant. This one cured asthma. This one was for warts and pimples. Another was a remedy for arthritis. He even had a special ointment which he claimed could cure baldness. Just rub it on your husband's head every night when he's sleeping, Miss Collingwood, and soon his hair will be as thick and long as Mary Lou's tail. Doc Hawthorne did not resent Sam. The folks of Green Lake were afraid to take chances. They would get regular medicine from Doc Hawthorne and onion concoctions from Sam. After they got over their illness, no one would be sure, not even Doc Hawthorne, which of the two treatments had done the trick. Doc Hawthorne was almost completely bald, and in the morning his head often smelled like onions. Whenever Catherine Barlow bought onions, she always bought an extra one or two and would met, let Mary Lou eat them out of her hand. Is something wrong? Sam asked her one day as she was feeding Mary Lou. You seem distracted. Oh, just the weather, said Miss Catherine. It looks like rain clouds moving in. Me and Mary Lou, we like the rain, said Sam. Oh, I like it fine, said Miss Catherine, as she rubbed the donkey's rough hair on the top of its head. It's just the roof and the, the roof leaks in the schoolhouse. I can fix that, said Sam. What are you going to do, Catherine joked, fill the holes with onion paste? Sam laughed. I'm good with my hands, he told her. I built my own boat. If it leaked, I'd be in big trouble. Catherine couldn't help but notice his strong, firm hands. They made a deal. He agreed to fix the leaky roof in exchange for six jars of spiced peaches. It took Sam a week to fix the roof because he could only work in the afternoons after school let out and before night classes began. Sam wasn't allowed to attend classes because he was a Negro, but they let him fix the building. Miss Catherine usually stayed in the schoolhouse, grading papers and such, while Sam worked on the roof. She enjoyed what little conversation they were able to have, shouting up and down at each other. She was surprised by his interest in poetry. When he took a break, 
She would sometimes read a poem to him. On one, more than one occasion, she would start to read a poem by Poe or Longfellow, only to hear him finish it for her from memory. She was sad when the roof was finished. Is something wrong? he asked. No, you did a wonderful job, she said. It's just that the windows won't open. The children and I would enjoy a, a breeze now and then. I can fix that, said Sam. She gave him two more jars of peaches and Sam fixed the windows. It was easier to talk to him when he was working on the windows. He told her about his secret onion field on the other side of the lake where the onions grow all year round and the water runs uphill. When the windows were fixed, she complained that her desk wobbled. I can fix that, said Sam. The next time she saw him, she mentioned that the door doesn't hang straight and she got to spend another afternoon with him while he fixed the door. By the end of the first semester, Onion Sam had turned the old rundown schoolhouse into a well-crafted, freshly painted jewel of a building that the whole town was proud of. People passing would stop and admire it. That's our schoolhouse. It shows how much we value education here in Green Lake. The only person who wasn't happy with it was Miss Catherine. She'd run out of things needing to be fixed. She sat at her desk one afternoon, listening to the pitter-patter of the rain on the roof. No water leaked into the classroom, except for the few drops that came from her eyes. Onions, hot, sweet onions, Sam called out on the street. She ran to him. She wanted to throw her arms around him, but she couldn't bring herself to do it. Instead, she hugged Mary Lou's neck. Oh, is something wrong? He asked her. Oh, Sam, she said, my heart is breaking. I can fix that said Sam. She turned to him and he took a hold of both of her hands and kissed her. Because of the rain there was nobody else out on the street. Even if there was, Catherine and Sam wouldn't have noticed. They were lost in their own world. At that moment, however, Hattie Parker stepped out of the general store. They didn't see her, but she saw them. She pointed her quivering finger in their direction and whispered, God will punish you.